Hello， 大家好啊！啊，我系 Alex， 嗯，代表 GBX， 诶，大健康，诶，主持呢个讲座。今日我哋好高兴咧，邀请到啊 Jamie Wong， 啊，中文名佢叫黄子祥，佢一个好有经验嘅物流同埋供应链嘅诶诶工作人员啦。咁亦都系运佢自己运作紧一间叫 Armstrong Moving 嘅公司嘅。咁啊，我同阿 Jamie 倾偈咧，佢话佢啲诶普通话。就比廣東話好，咁但係佢聽得懂嘅，誒、呃，所以佢今晚咧，主要嘅部分係會用講誒呢個英語誒、呃、發表佢嗰、那個誒嗰、呃那個講座啦，嗰、那個 PowerPoint 都係誒、呃、全部英語嚟嘅。但係完咗之後咧，喺嗰個答問嘅環節咧，歡迎大家用廣東話或者普通話發問嘅，佢亦都會用翻廣東話或者普通話誒誒、呃、回應你哋啦。啊，咁而家咧。睇睇我哋一個免責聲明先啦，呢、这個 GBX 嘅物流經經貿交流同埋大健康咧，都係由 GBX 誒、呃、舉辦嘅，咁就誒呢、呃这個平台屬於一個係誒、呃、商業信息交流嘅平台啊，所以講者發表嘅內容咧，同埋資料咧，都係誒、呃、參與者嘅言論咧，平台嘅負責人就不保證佢嘅準確性，咁你 fact check 啦。咁其他嗰啲細節咧都係一般咁樣啦。咁就誒、呃，我哋亦都會錄影個視頻嘅。咁可能會喺其他啲平台呢、這個誒、呃、公開發表嘅。咁誒、呃，希望你哋明白。如果你睇完呢個之後，換句説話，你哋都係同意嘅。咁啊，最後咧就誒、呃、有少少誒資料。咁你哋每個出席嘅來賓咧都好歡迎你哋啦。咁亦都希望你哋喺你嗰、那個誒、呃、名嗰度咧。誒加翻一個正確嘅名字，如果有一個相同嘅，譬如好似我 Alex 嘅，我會用翻我自己英文名 Alexander 咯。啊，咁如果再有相同嘅，或者你可以加埋你嘅地區咯，譬如誒、呃、我哋温哥華，你可以 Vancouver、Canada 之類此類嗰啲，或者 Hong Kong 啊，因為我哋來自有誒世界唔同地方嘅人啦，好似 Winston 喺美國啊、羅莎啊佢哋咁樣住住嚟啊，咁就喺講座開始嗰陣時嚟講咧，麻煩你哋將嗰個麥咧就瞄咗佢，如果唔係就會影響到誒嗰個流程嘅。主講嘉賓演講時咧，就最好唔好發問啦。啊，誒、呃、完咗之後嚟講咧，我哋係會有一段時間俾大家係做嗰、那個發問嘅時間嘅一個 Q&A 嘅。咁亦都係我諗大家都好熟噶啦。咁就按規矩，就先舉手，我哋就會輪住個次序。誒、呃、舉手個 button 咧，我諗大致上都知嘅。如果你哋唔知嘅話，誒、呃、到時我哋再睇下點樣處理。啊，咁而家我就將個時間交俾啊，我哋今晚啦嘅主講嘉賓。啊，黄子阳先生 ，Jamie Wong。So thank you for that introduction, Alex. And、uh, firstly, my apologies that I'm not able to do this in Cantonese. Unfortunately, my Cantonese is just not fluent enough to do the、uh, presentation tonight. Oh, that's um, fine. So yeah, yeah so、uh, the topic for、uh, discussion or、uh, for a chat tonight is the logistics and supply chain challenges that we're facing in the current、uh, pandemic situation. Now.、Um, Alex, can you show the PowerPoint presentation, please? Yeah, I'm getting ready now. Okay, can you see it? Yes. Can you move on to page two? Next page. So,、uh, once again, thank you so much for your invitation to talk about this particular topic tonight.、Um, I would like to tell you a little bit、uh, about myself. I was、uh, born in Asia, but raised mainly in the Netherlands and the UK. So. Uh, I've had a little bit of a,、um, an international experience, even growing up,、uh, having uh, uh, been been raised in three different countries,、uh, primarily in the Netherlands and UK. And if I do speak、uh, too quickly, do let me know, Alex, and I would、uh, slow down a little bit. So,、uh, yeah, just let me know, okay?、Uh, I have I have twenty years of uh, uh, year, years of experience in this particular industry, specifically in the logistics and household goods moving industry. Uh, I will tell you a little bit more about the company that I work for, Armstrong Moving.、Uh, specifically, my int、uh, my interest and my experience is in the house of goods moving industry, which I will talk about a little bit later on.、Uh, I've also lived in over、uh, or lived and studied in over uh, ten uh, different international cities, including Amsterdam, London, Hong Kong, Shanghai, Beijing, and Seoul.、Um, I would say that my most interesting stint. Uh, that I had as a student and also study、uh, was in Seoul, where I was based、um, in total for about nine years. So,、uh, 
If the audience has any questions about soul or career, I've been more than, more than happy to answer it too. Um, I've been a senior manager for over 15 years, managing teams ranging from 20 to 300 people. Um, I managed a team in Seoul, uh, which was about 20 people. And I also managed a team in Beijing, which was about 300 people as well. So my experience has been quite wide in terms of the, uh, the team sizes that I've managed. I'm also experienced in a setup of greenfield operations. Many of you in this business, business field may know that greenfield operations is basically the setup of a company from scratch. So I set up three companies from scratch in Tianjin, uh, Seoul, and then also in Vancouver as well. Uh, I'm currently based in Vancouver, managing the Western Canada region uh, for uh, a company called Armstrong Moving. Next page, please, Alex. So the company that I work for has been opera operational since 1963, basically almost 60 years. This is our 60th anniversary and we uh, focus and we specialize in providing household goods and moving services uh, to anybody who wants to move from A to B. Uh, next slide, please, Alex. So these are some of the services that we provide. I'm not going to go too much into detail about this, because this whole uh, point of tonight is to talk about uh, logistics, not about my company, but I also have to, of course, let you know about what we do. Uh, like I mentioned before, we specialize in moving services, not only just moving people locally within Canada uh, or, or domestically within Canada, but also the US and uh, overseas as well. Uh, we also have other divisions uh, that um, specialize in providing services for the fine arts community, warehousing, and also scientific as well. I will go into a little bit more detail later on in the subsequent uh, uh, PowerPoint pages. Next page, please, Alex. Uh, one of the services that we specialize in is household goods moving, and this is basically my expertise. We help people move their household goods, their, uh, their personal effects, even their pets, their cars from A to B. Uh, so it doesn't matter where you're moving from and to, let's say you're moving from Hong Kong, to the UK, this is something that we provide as a service uh, to our customers, not just uh, corporate customers, not just to the likes of Amazon or, or, or Microsoft. We also provide um, moving services to private individuals. One of our biggest markets, it's actually importing and helping Hong Kongers move to Vancouver and Canada. So uh, this is something that we have great expertise in. Next page, please, Alex. Okay, uh, an interesting division that we have is our fine arts division. You may ask, what is actually fine arts? Fine arts is as it sounds. Basically, any uh, a piece of art that any of our customers may have, uh, they want to store it, they want to transport it. This is something that we also do as well. We sometimes help customers transport art, a high value piece of a painting from let's say Hong Kong to, to Los Angeles, or even domestically from Vancouver to Toronto, or we even, we even actually store it. We have a very, very large facility in Toronto that actually specializes and dedicates uh, uh, the, 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 the services to uh, storing art. And also we have a room whereby our customers can actually profile their art and sell their art as well. So this is actually quite an interesting service that we provide. Next page, please. So uh, another service that we provide is actually logistics made for laboratories. So even though we are a moving company, we do provide some uh, logistics services. And this is in relation to medical equipment. So not only do we actually transport medical equipment for hospitals and universities, but we also store and uh, reinstall and disassemble medical equipment, not just in the USA uh, or, or to the USA within Canada, but also internationally as well. Next page, please. So uh, we are also a warehousing specialist as well. So in addition to all the other services that we mentioned, we uh, house and store all kinds of goods for our customers. And this is something that we store in terms of uh, the goods not being household goods. We store uh, perishable goods, like uh, we even store food, uh, milk products. We, we store uh, cereals. We store medical equipment. We store uh, uh, air cons that uh, that uh, um, shops may actually want to sell. So this is actually a service that we provide 
uh, in uh, Toronto and also in Vancouver and Montreal as well. And we help our customers store their goods until they actually are ready to deliver it out. And we have a very, very large facility in Toronto, which is about 200,000 square feet. Uh, next page, please. Uh, the Armstrong D Difference, we're a company that is very, very financially stable and secure. We've been operational since 1963, like I mentioned, and uh, we're a multilingual team where a lot of different languages are being spoken. I myself sp speak uh, Korean, uh, Mandarin, English, and a little bit of Cantonese. Next page, please. We're also a corporate social, socially responsible company whereby for every 10 moves that we do, we actually plant a tree uh, in Canada. Uh, we're also part of the World Vision pro Program and also Move for Hunger pro Program whereby we donate uh, some of our uh, proceeds uh, to helping uh, people in, in need in the third world. Next page, please. So now we go into the uh, main topic, which is logistics in a pandemic. Now, everybody knows that this is a, a problem right now in terms of um, logistics uh, globally. It doesn't matter if it's uh, related to the time that it takes to transport things from A to B, the cost, uh, and also the difficulty in securing supplies. Everything is actually quite difficult right now in terms of uh, logistics. So my whole presentation itself is focused on a uh, couple of things. First thing that I want is has the global supply chain been impacted? Now, uh, pork are unfair in uh, every corner of the world. Congestions in Asia, the pork congestions in, 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 in Australasia, North America, UK, everywhere. It's just how severe it is. Uh, just a couple of examples out of the top 10 most congested. Uh, ports in the world, three of them are in the United States, primarily Los Angeles, Seattle, and also um, San Francisco as well. Uh, somebody asked me the question, why is it specifically a problem in the USA? It's to do with the unfortunate thing that even prior to the pandemic, there are certain ports that are very, very efficient, uh, but there are also certain ports that are not very efficient. And these three ports uh, uh, and adding on to the UK ports are prior to the pandemic, very in inefficient ports. And when there are congestions or when there are severe delays, it unfortunately creates a uh, domino effect whereby uh, an inefficient port has become even more inefficient. And I will talk a little bit about that now, but this basically impacts the whole supply chain because it takes time to move things from A to B. Uh, at every one of these ports, let's say Seattle or Los Angeles, if a boat, or ship calls at a port, it can literally stay there for 20 or 30 days just to wait to offload the container and to reload a, a new container. Freight rates are also at an all-time high. Um, as you probably know, we do uh, household goods moving services, uh, and specifically uh, one of our biggest markets is Hong Kong to uh, Vancouver. Prior to the pandemic, a 40-foot container from Hong Kong to Vancouver would have costed no more than 2,000 US dollars. It is now approximately between 15 to 20,000 US dollars per 40 foot container. So you can imagine that with this kind of cost increase, how much it has impacted just the general cost of goods. Uh, just as an example, here, I live here in Vancouver. And um, um, a couple of days ago, I went to a Korean supermarket where I usually go and get my ramen. And the box of ramen has increased uh, in price by, by two times. So. This is felt by everybody. It doesn't matter if you're based in North America or in the UK, Hong Kong, uh, it's impacting everybody's lives as well. There's also a huge demand for shipping services, uh, which leads to a lack of space on ships. So there are just not enough ships. And because there are not enough ships, even though you have a lot of demand for containers, there are not enough ships to be able to service um, the transportation efficiently. So that's why uh, there's a huge delay in uh, seeing things are being uh, shipped from A to B. And one of the biggest key drivers to this huge demand is basically a rebounding of uh, consumer spending. So you can see that the business of Amazon is absolutely increasing. And Amazon tends to distribute their goods uh, from local uh, warehouses. And in order to get goods from, lo uh, from, from local uh, um, warehouses to, to, the, to the general public, 
prior to that, you actually have to ship it from a, uh, a source like China or Hong Kong. So from Hong Kong to Canada, a big batch of 40 for container comes and then they deconsolidate it. If the source gets slowed down, then the middle point to the end point also gets slowed down as well. And that's to do with the lack of space on ships. Uh, also, shipping lines cannot keep up with the manufacturing of new ships. So to manufacture a new ship can take anywhere between uh, three to five years. So uh, we've been in this pandemic for two and a half years now. So um, a lot of these companies are struggling to uh, uh, basically manufacture ships quick enough to be able to serve the demands and needs of this new world that we operate in. Also, another thing that is interesting is that shipping lines are now canceling, postponing lanes and routes. So prior to the pandemic, we basically had no issues in booking any containers to anywhere. Right now, just as an example uh, from Vancouver, uh, most of the shipping lines don't service South Africa. Um, only half of the shipping lines service Australia. A couple of reasons, uh, the main reason is because these routes may no longer be profitable. And secondly, because these routes traditionally call at ports where these ports are now very congested. So uh, Australia and New Zealand is a prime example whereby if you uh, move a ship uh, from Vancouver to Australia, traditionally it has to go through Seattle, Portland, uh, sorry, Seattle, uh, San Francisco, and uh, Los Angeles as well. But because of the port congestions, a lot of these shipping lines don't want to call at these ports. So they're, uh, they're cancelling and postponing routes uh, quite, quite significantly. Uh, port charges are also on the rise as well due to port congestion. You may ask, well, why, why does port congestion um, 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 impact port charges? So when a container gets to the port, um, if the port takes a long time to deconsolidate the container, to move the container from the boat to the floor, um, and also secondly, if they take their time in making the container available to you, the port actually charges you something called a port detention and container detention fee. So um, even though the ports are being inefficient themselves, they actually charge you for their inefficiency. And as a result of that, this has increased the uh, port charges in a lot of major locations. Just as an example in the UK, uh, for a 40 foot container, uh, it takes on average 10 to 14 days to make a container available. And during that time, you have to pay basically 2,000 pounds just for the storage of the container at the port. And this is ultimately passed on to the consumer. Also, of course, uh, record high prices. I will talk a little bit about the reason why there is uh, a problem with the gas prices, but of course, because of the gas prices, it has further increased the cost of, uh, of, of transportation uh, globally. Right now in Vancouver, we're paying $2.40 per liter. When I arrived in Vancouver five years ago, I paid $1.25 uh, per liter. So basically, um, gas has doubled in five years in terms of the cost itself. So next uh, page, please, Alex. What is causing the supply chain disruptions, you may ask? So obviously, the trade tension between China and US, and you may ask, well, why does this cause supply chain disruptions. Quite simple, uh, these uh, two uh, economic super heavyweights are very important to the global economy. And when these two superpowers and economies have an issue with each other, supply chain changes. So uh, if, for example, the USA is not sourcing certain supplies from China anymore and vice versa, China has to source from somewhere else in the, uh, um, other than USA, uh, the USA and China would actually have to go to other sources uh, to be able to get the materials that they want. And as a result, it puts a very, very big strain on the rest of the world, um, uh, which, which, which means that the rest of the world has to cover for anything that China wants to buy, previously from the USA, but now they can't buy from the USA because of the trade tension, they're now buying from other uh, countries. Now, uh, also a record demand for uh, con containers, especially from Asia. Now that uh, a lot of the economies are rebounding, um, except China, we see a lot more activity that is being exported from Asia. Um, now, this has also been increased by the increase in demand uh, for containers being shipped out of Hong Kong. As many of you know, 
due to the political situation in Hong Kong, a lot of people are leaving Hong Kong right now. And when people leave Hong Kong, they usually ship their household goods from A to B. Uh, now, right now, uh, the most popular destination for Hong Kongers to go to is actually the UK. Just to give an example, uh, I grew up in the UK and I grew up in a town called Maidstone in Kent. And um, when I was growing up, uh, we were the only Asian family or the only East Asian family in that town. Uh, I went back about a month ago and uh, about five to six percent to seven percent of the population there are now from East Asia, primarily from Hong Kong. So you can see uh, how this is actually impacting also the social movement of people as well. Um, also, another thing that is uh, causing a supply chain uh, uh, disruption is uh, the lockdown in China. As you can all see, because of the lockdown in China, uh, not only did they lock down cities, they also locked down ports, whereby literally nothing gets out and nothing gets in. And this is uh, impacting the supply of materials. Now, China is a big, big supplier to the rest of the world when it comes to um, materials. Uh, semiconductor parts is also something which is quite important which is also um, uh, um, 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 supplied by China. Uh, I heard that in Japan, uh, Toyota, uh, they actually suspended manufacturing of their vehicles for one month because they were simply not getting enough parts, uh, uh, mainly due to the lockdown in China. And one of the parts is semiconductors, which is a key component of, 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 of vehicles. So uh, that in itself uh, causes basically a whole uh, supply chain disruption whereby um, cars will be manufactured uh, 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 um, late, it will take more time to transport, and it will ultimately get to the, uh, uh, the end consumer late, causing a rippling uh, effect. Um, also, there's a lack of drivers and manpower as well because of the increase in demand and not enough labor to handle uh, the extra work that is being, being, being uh, required. Uh, just as an example, another uh, example in the UK, about three or four months ago in the UK, it got so serious, the lack of driver uh, problem uh, got so serious that they had to draft in the UK army to deliver food to the supermarkets. So uh, that's just an example of how uh, bad the situation is. Uh, prior to uh, Brexit, 20% uh, of the drivers in the UK were from the European Union. And now European Union drivers can no longer work in the UK. That instantaneously removed 20% of the uh, driver's workforce in the UK. So just a, an example of how uh, a lack of drivers can impact even your daily life. Unpredictable cost increases. Um, I remember we were servicing a customer uh, that was moving uh, to Australia. And uh, you know, within the one week period, the ocean freight rate uh, for a 20 feet container increased from $6,000 to $9,000. And there are a lot of reasons for that. It may well be that uh, there is a, a, a severe congestion at the port that they're calling uh, on or at um, on the way to Australia. And as a result, they're charging you a uh, congestion uh, um, premium as well. So a lot of other um, uh, factors involved in the unpredictable cost increases, but ultimately this is passed on to the consumer, which makes uh, us as human beings uh, uh, um, the, the people that would have to take on the unpredictable cost increases. Um, also a lack of container availability. So like I said, um, because of the explosion in demand for goods and services, uh, <clears throat> more containers are required and um, uh, container uh, manufacturers just can't manufacture containers quickly enough to be able to service it. And as a result, there's a general shortage of container availability uh, in this market right now. And it's not just uh, in North America, it's happening globally everywhere around the world. Uh, next page, please. So uh, continuing um, lack of space on vessels as well, you may ask, what, what does that mean? It's a little bit like um, you waiting at a bus stop for a, a bus and the bus comes and the bus is full. You can't get on the, uh, the bus. Basically, this is what's happening with boats. Uh, we uh, had a situation, I think, a couple of weeks ago, whereby we booked a container for a customer. And then one week before we were supposed to load the, con uh, the, 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 uh, the container onto the ship, uh, the shipping line said, oh, we have no space, even though we booked. So this is actually happening quite a lot. That's they would actually give the space to the highest spender. And because we were paying a slightly lower rate, 
they kicked our container off the vessel and gave it to somebody who was willing to pay more. Um, the person who pays the most, the business that pays the most, would basically ultimately get the space. And as a result, a lot of uh, lack of space problems on vessels right now. Longer transit time. Um, so um, prior to the pandemic, it would probably take no more than 20 to 25 days to get a uh, ship from Hong Kong to uh, Vancouver. Now it's taking up to 40, 40 days. Uh, so it's it's a serious problem right now. And this is the shortest routing that I can give you an example of. Uh, uh, longer routings would have longer transit times than pre previously before. Uh, also unpredictable lane and routing changes. So uh, we work with a Hong Kong based uh, shipping line called the OOCL, where we had a situation whereby we had booked it. The routing was uh, from Hong Kong, sorry, from Vancouver to, uh, to Australia. And it was supposed to call us Seattle, Los Angeles, and San Francisco. Last minute, they changed it to via Hong Kong. The reason was because the uh, severe congestion in, uh, in Los Angeles. So um, this can happen basically at one moment's notice and it can impact how long it takes to get to destination. In this case, it was a positive impact because it was short in the transit line, but uh, uh, it, it can possibly even uh, uh, lengthen the uh, transit uh, time it takes uh, to get from A to B. Also because of the war in Europe. Now, uh, I don't know if you guys know, but the Ukraine is a very, very important part of the uh, European economy. About 15 to 20% of the food that is consumed by the European Union is actually provided by the Ukraine. So because of the supply chain disruptions, um, it's quite difficult right now to get uh, food supplies from the Ukraine or, or, or even more to say that is almost impossible. So a lot of European countries are now uh, diverting their attention to buying from other sources as well. So instead of buying from Ukraine, they could well be buying from Australia, from, from New Zealand to, uh, to South Africa or somewhere else like uh, North America, which increases the, uh, the cost of, of, of living in Europe as well. Demand for goods are at an all time high as well. This is kind of like what I mentioned earlier as well. Amazon is one of the key drivers of the online business that we're seeing a boom in. But by and large, unfortunately, uh, this demand is unlikely to change in 2022. But however, this could uh, change in 2023 as consumer spending may actually uh, cool down then. Uh, there is, as I mentioned before, a production shortfall to the high demand and unavailability uh, uh, of um, resources and parts. Uh, the example that I gave earlier about cars, uh, that they're not being able to uh, manufacture cars quickly enough to meet the demand uh, because of the uh, problems that they're having in sourcing parts, in, in particular, in particular uh, or sourcing parts from China. So that's uh, a, a, a key problem right now, uh, um, impacting the production shortfall. Now, uh, I also mentioned earlier, uh, Brexit has impacted the UK severely due to... Uh, the protectionist EU measures. Uh, one of the reasons why I mentioned this is because now the U UK actually has to pay import duties for certain, or importers have to pay import duties for certain UK goods to go into Europe, making Europe more or less competitive uh, or, or making UK less competitive in terms of their products uh, and whatnot. And also because of the strict immigration laws, it's also impacting the labor force. And like I said before, previously, 20% uh, of the driver workforce was from the EU, and now they're all gone. And this is not just impacting um, the uh, workforce that works in the logistics industry, it's the whole entire uh, uh, country. Um, and the whole entire country prior to Brexit was already 15 to 20% EU residents. So it has impacted the UK quite significantly as well. As I also mentioned earlier, the Chinese economy slowdown has also disrupted the supply chain in basically uh, putting most, if not all of the ports to a standstill. One of the key uh, 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 countries that have been impacted is actually Korea. So if you guys go online and take a look at how Korea has performed, Korea has actually performed quite poorly uh, because of the fact that it is a country that de depends uh, quite a bit on the business from uh, China. Uh, as they say, if uh, China sneezes, uh, Korea will catch a cold. Now, uh, this is just my personal opinion in terms of how we can help the world get through this 
particular uh, challenging time, um, I would say a few tips from my side would be to try and buy uh, and uh, support uh, uh, local businesses. I'm certainly doing so as well here in, uh, in, in, in Vancouver, whereby I try to buy stuff that is locally produced in British Columbia or even locally produced in Vancouver. So I don't necessarily have to go to the supply chain uh, outside of uh, BC or even outside of Canada. I know this is quite difficult for people in Hong Kong, but uh, hopefully people in North America can, 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 can perhaps do that. Um, the economy is obviously um, um, uh, on the up and up and up after a uh, short period of uh, inactivity, but try and actually help the economy by upgrading on whatever you can do to, to drive the economy. So uh, yeah, in the future, I'll be looking at upgrading the, a car to hopefully be able to thrive and, and, and continue to support the economy as well. There are also uh, economies that uh, are struggling right now, um, not struggling just because of the fact that they don't have enough people to service, but also because of the fact that um, a lot of people are not spending in these uh, 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 certain industries. So the F&B industry, the food and beverage industry is a problem right now. Typically, uh, uh, I would say in Asia, where I think people are a little bit more hesitant to go out and eat. So uh, if you, the, the place that you are in, that you're living in, is a country where it's opening up, please try and actually go out, spend money, go to restaurants and spend money and help um, build back the economy again. And this is the only way that we can actually uh, help the uh, world recover from this uh, e uh, uh, short economic slump. Also, one thing that is interesting right now that's happening in North America, specifically in Canada, is that we need to encourage people to go into industries where we're lacking people. So uh, the Canadian government has done quite well in giving benefits and extending benefits to those who were temporarily laid off during the early days of the pandemic. But unfortunately, this has gotten people a little bit lazy. And as a result, a lot of people have gotten more comfortable and are continuing to find ways to not work. So we need to encourage people to go back into these industries, especially the transportation industry, because we need people in this industry right now to keep up with the increased demand for goods and services. Also, if you are a business owner, uh, consider temporary or permanent COVID uh, impact salary increases. Um, so during the early days of the pandemic, uh, uh, Armstrong, we actually, uh, or sorry, during the middle days of the pandemic, Armstrong as a company actually gave a, uh, a permanent salary increase for um, our uh, staff who were uh, suffering from the uh, inflation of having to pay record high food prices and also gas prices as well. So we're one company that actually takes pride in that in, in terms of taking care of our uh, people uh, in times of need. Also, perhaps try and actually learn new skills to thrive in this new world. Um, during the first six months of the pandemic, I had to work from home and I actually had to learn new IT skills to be able to, 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 uh, to, to keep on working. So that's one thing that I would also encourage people to do is to learn new skills to be able to operate in this new world that we're going ourselves or getting ourselves into. Also, if possible, um, try and actually buy durable and sustainable goods uh, that is good for the environment. Uh, we see that uh, the, uh, the world is right, right now is, act, is actually getting hotter and hotter and hotter. What was it? In, uh, in Spain, they recorded the hottest day in, 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 in Spain ever where it hit 41 Celsius, and this is May. So try and actually uh, buy sustainable goods that will not contribute to the uh, uh, global warming environment. Um, could consider things like uh, 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 changing to an electric vehicle and whatnot. So that would be one thing that I would also try and uh, recommend. Next page, please, Alex. So what is the outlook for the future of logistics? Um, we predict, uh, or shall I say, uh, a lot of experts in this industry predict that the global supply chain disruptions will remain for the rest of 2022. Um, how this will evolve into 2023, we don't know. It's a difficult thing to predict because it depends on a lot of things. It depends on how the Chinese economy opens. It depends on the China-USA uh, trade relations. And it also depends on what's happening in the Ukraine and um, uh, Russia as well. But however, I'm optimistic that eventually 
the global chi uh, um, chain, uh, global supply chain disruptions will uh, be a little bit more manageable. Output production will eventually rise in 2023. Now, uh, output production meaning that uh, in industries whereby we're struggling to get uh, parts to produce new goods, I'm talking about semiconductors and whatnot, hopefully this will rise in 2023 as global supply chain disruptions are a little bit less than before. Uh, global orders for container ships are at an all-time high. I read in an article that um, in 2021, um, the increase in the number of orders uh, in terms of containers has actually risen by about 20%. So uh, shipping lines uh, are absolutely going at full pace to basically try and uh, manufacture more container ships, okay? However, the problem is the capacity. So it doesn't matter how many container ships you have. Um, you can increase the container ships by another 15 to 20% if the port structures, if the terminal structures are as such that it cannot take more containers to be handled, the same port congestions will still happen. And unfortunately, this is going to continue to impact because um, port capacity cannot be increased overnight. It can't be increased in five years. It can't be increased in two years. This kind of thing needs planning. Port capacity would probably take um, 10 to 15 to 20 years to be able to plan this. And this is why it's important uh, for us to be able to uh, 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 work together as humankind to overcome this, uh, this period of time. Uh, predicted um, um, that global trade volume will normalize to pre-pandemic -pand le levels starting in 2023. This basically means that a lot of economists are predicting that now the rush of economic activity may actually start to normalize at the end of 2023. I am slightly of a different opinion in that I think it will most likely go into 2024 to 2025. Unfortunately, this is the way it is right now. Consumer behavior changes are also um, something that will uh, impact uh, the future of logistics. So for example, uh, we're all seeing uh, the problems that the US is facing right now and most likely Canada will have an issue with the baby powder situation. Now, um, the baby powder situation is so severe that I heard on the radio today that Biden uh, actually uh, issued a presidential order uh, to order um, baby milk powder from Europe to be flown in into the United States. So under normal circumstances, baby powder is actually transported by sea. But because of the supply chain disruptions and because of a closure of a plant that actually is a key to um, manufacturing uh, baby milk powder in the USA has closed, this has, me this has meant that they had to actually go outside uh, of their country to do that. But I think countries right now have to move with the times and being able to produce domestically rather than uh, always continuously depend on another source of, 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 of material. So we need to be able to, as much as possible, be able to self-suffice uh, uh, and, and uh, be able to produce what we need as much as possible with the resources that we have domestically. So we don't always depend on the outside uh, influence and an outside source. Uh, thank you for listening to me. This basically concludes my presentation about my opinion on uh, logistics uh, during a pandemic. Uh, now, um, guys, um, perhaps so what we can do right now is we can conduct the Q&A session. Uh, in this part, uh, feel free to ask questions in Mandarin and also in uh, Guangdonghua and Pudonghua. Uh, uh, or how you what time my to come uh, late and uh, I can definitely be able to um, conduct uh, some of the answers in uh, in Putin as well so thank you for listening to me thank you very much Jamie a uh, wonderful presentation and informative content uh, from an industrial expert I would like to comment uh, as long as you are living in Vancouver so we'll commence um, the local part. Uh, we all know we have the Vancouver port, we have the Delta port, um, and also your experience all over the world, many countries. Um, will you give a, a little bit your uh, insight 
comparative with the other country like United States, UK, or even Hong Kong, China? Sure, sure. So um, I would say the situation at these ports uh, is dependent on, on, on a few factors. On the Firstly, on the operational efficiency of these ports, even prior to the pandemic. Uh, secondly, uh, how much the government has invested in improving the port infrastructure in these countries as well. So I think in general, Vancouver has done OK. Now, uh, I know uh, that um, this group uh, is uh, in the process of organizing a trip to Delta Port very, very soon. Uh, I think it's sometime in Ju June, whereby we will organize a trip. Uh, I think maximum 22 people uh, can join this tour to go uh, on a tour to uh, Delta Port. Now, Delta Port is actually quite an interesting port because Delta Port is this, the port or the terminal uh, in Vancouver that actually handles all of the Asian containers. So if there's a container that's coming from Hong Kong to Vancouver, it's likely to come into Delta Port. All right. So Vancouver has multiple ports. And the majority of the ports are doing quite well. We're very limited port congestion. The only port that is having an issue is Delta Port, believe it or not. And that's because of the fact that there is uh, 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 the trade between uh, Asia and um, Vancouver is quite strong. Now, even then, the port congestion here in Vancouver is not as severe. Um, uh, recently, we had a container that we uh, delivered to a customer whereby it was actually stuck at Delta Port for two weeks, which is not too bad. However, if you actually had a similar situation in Los Angeles or Seattle or in uh, San Francisco, uh, it could take up to a month just to get a container out of the port. Whereas in Hong Kong, Hong Kong is actually a little bit better than uh, Vancouver, where you could take about five to seven days. Traditionally, Hong Kong once a ship actually gets there, the next day the container is available for you to pick up. Uh, traditionally, Vancouver, two or three days, uh, but Vancouver is doing quite well. Okay, okay, sir. Uh, okay, the calling, go yes, I was uh, hey, uh, hey, Jimmy, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, uh, excellent presentation, uh, insights into the logistic business. Uh, but I was thinking that they, uh, just like you suggest, uh, that this change to, to uh, local reliances, would it uh, give to a uh, permanent uh, discontinue of what we call the globalization program? Because people of my generation uh, grew up on globalization, they were sold all the beautiful promises and advantages of globalization. And the more globalization is, the better it is for everybody in the world. So would this be a permanent change or stop to the globalization as we know it? Yeah, I don't think it's going to change the continued globalization of trade. Um, and I'm looking at um, the evolving of uh, humankind. Uh, in, 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 in this particular topic, because we, we all need each other. It doesn't matter if we're Chinese or from the Ukraine or from Japan, we all need each other to be able to survive. So I think uh, we will continue to uh, globally trade, but I think there's more uh, of a movement towards uh, companies, uh, sorry, countries being a little bit more self-sufficient. So I, 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 I listened to a, um, a, an interview that Joe Biden gave uh, uh, about two or three weeks ago, whereby he talked about the importance of keeping American jobs in America. And this is the president of the largest economy in the world, right? So I think global trade will always be there because we, we will always need each other. But I think there's more of a trend to go towards countries that will invest in being able to be more self-sufficient than ever before. I don't think this will ever stop globalization, but I think countries will more, move more towards thinking about what they can do domestically rather than what they can do cheaply overseas. And this will ultimately, unfortunately, increase the cost of living for everybody. Thank you. Okay, next one we have a Francis Chin. Francis, I'm really 
Okay. Jimmy, you know, uh, David, thank, thank you for your presentation. I, I do have a few questions, you know, which I don't quite understand, you know. Um, I think that all the things that uh, are depending on demand and supply. It seems to me that the demand is decreasing because of the COVID, because of the trade war. But right now we can see that there was an increase on the on the on the on the on, on the price on the logistics. And is it because of the air, air, uh, air cargo? Because the airplane also stopped, and that's why you are not delivering uh, by the uh, air cargo. So that's one question. Another question is, with the demand go down, how come you got a congestion in the LA port, which I can see a lot of good cannot be delivered, okay? This is uh, uh, against my intuition. And, and also the, the, the third thing, the, another question is about the meal product. Is the meal product because of the logistics or because of the, some other reasons, because the war, you know? Uh, this is a, a few questions which are not clear about the logistics, you know, um, uh, scenario, okay? Maybe you can help me to, to enlighten me on these questions, yeah. Yeah, I, <laughs> I will try to. Uh, because like I said, uh, I, I, I actually specialize in the movement of household goods. So uh, you're kind of like asking a question that's related uh, more to the commercial logistics side of things, but, but I will try my best. Okay. So um, in answer to your first question, it's about the movement of goods. You mentioned something about uh, uh, why is it not moving by air or because it's moving by air, it, it is so expensive. So um, by and large, uh, the majority of the goods that are being moved globally are actually moved by sea. So um, only items that are of a perishable nature are actually moved by air. I would say that air costs have actually stabilized a little bit more uh, than ever before because of the fact that I would say, my guess would be out of everything that we consume, including the perishable and non-perishables, uh, only probably 10 to 15% of all global trade is done by air. So the remaining 85% is done by sea. And because of, an, because of the period of inactivity right after the, uh, 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 sorry, um, during the pandemic, uh, we, we, we basically had uh, the global world try to do things within two years that they could have done in three years. So we basically lost a year of economic activity during the early uh, one year of pandemic. So whatever the people wanted to do in that particular year was pushed on to the second year. And eventually speaking, uh, we're trying to do what we're supposed to be doing within three years, but now squeezed into two years. And as a result of that, there is, is, is obviously a, a, a lot of stress on the ports because they're basically handling 33 to 50% more than they uh, um, were previously handling. And you cannot increase uh, a port uh, ca capacity at a whim, and you can't increase uh, the number of ships and containers at a whim too. So as a result of that, because things are being so congested, ocean freight companies are absolutely taking advantage of the situation whereby they know that it takes longer and there's less space involved, they're gonna charge you more. Now, going on to the, the new products, I, I, I'm not entirely sure what you meant by new products. Do you mean new pro products relating to uh, people buying more sustainable goods? Is that what you're saying? Or uh, I'm not so sure what you meant by that particular question. No, 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 no. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't mention that, you know. Um, I mean, I cannot turn on my video because the host uh, stopped me, okay? Otherwise, you can, you can see me, you know. I try to turn on, you know, but... Uh, no problems, no problems, no problems. Yeah, yeah, because host, you know, asked me to stop. Uh, okay, maybe I can start again, you know. Because, okay, you can see me right now, you know. Sure. So what I mean is the milk product, the milk product, the milk product. Okay, I mean, is it the milk product because of logistics or other reasons? You know, because you know that we heard about the US, they are running out of the formula for the babies. You know. Yeah. So, uh, again, I'm not a commercial logistics expert, but from what I, I heard earlier, um, now the US has having a big problem because one of the biggest plants that actually uh, 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 pro produces materials and or manufactures uh, the milk products or baby milk powder, not milk, okay. but baby milk powder products milk powder. in the United States has, cl has closed down. Uh, so the, the main manufacturing 
uh, um, location has actually closed down. And one of the reasons why it has closed down is because they needed to source materials. And some of these materials okay. came from, uh, not, from China, came from Ukraine as well. It's not because of logistics. Then what about the LA, you know? I, I heard about the LA ports, you know, there's a lot of chip cannot be unloaded. Is it because of, it's not a logistic problem, it's a, it's a labor problem, is that true? Uh, yeah. I wouldn't say it's a, a labor problem or, 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 or um, a congestion problem caused by anything else other than the size of the port. Because when the number of containers and ships that call into your port increases by 33 to 50%, if you were previously already operating at a certain capacity, you can't handle a, a, a capacity higher than your 100% capacity, right? Yeah, so that's, that's the thing I don't understand. Because you say that the, the traffic is slow already, you know, how come you got a peak, you know, you got the, the volume increase so much in LA, you know? I, when, you know because of the supply and demand, you know, right now you, you mentioned the demand is lower, you know, then how come no, the bottom net is over there? No, so um, maybe you misunderstood what I said. Uh, so there's no slowdown in the demand for goods. What is slow is the transit time. The transit time to transport transport things from A to B. So previously, if it took maybe 30 days to transport from Vancouver to Hong Kong, it now takes 50 days. So the transit time takes longer. However, Why, the, uh, Why, but, the, Why the well, transit because, time? Because they have to call at intermediate ports to be able to service. So for example, uh, traditionally a, uh, a, a container ship that goes from Hong Kong would most likely call China and then call Taiwan, call Japan, Korea, and then come eventually here. So yeah. every port in the world is congested. So if they stop at these ports, it will get delayed by a couple of days here, a couple of days there, a couple of days there. And ultimately when it gets to Vancouver, it will get here 20 days late. So it's a, it's a domino effect. Every port is being congested or is congested right now. And if one port is congested for two or three days, you stop at five ports, you're congested by, by, by 10 days already. That, um, I don't understand, you know, it seemed to me that the 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 good to be transport is is le less you know than before. before oh no, war, no, this is uh, is that true? No, this is uh, um uh, basically the demand for goods is at at its highest ever in right? mankind. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Be because, like I said, um, we are trying to uh, mankind are trying to achieve within two years something that we were supposed to achieve in three years. So during the one. The first year of the pandemic, there was a, uh, a huge slowdown of activity. And of course, after a year, people started thinking, you know what? This pandemic is not going to go away. I'm going to go back and act like I normally did. And as a result, people started spending normally again. So we basically tried to jam into two years that, uh, something I that we could have done in three years. And as a result of this, it's overwhelming the system. Well, and bad luck. Backlog behind, and uh, as a result, causing the backlog, and of course, causing material shortage because it takes longer to transport, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's a domino effect. One thing affects okay. another, and another thing impacts another, and just goes on and on and on and on. Okay, thank you. I, I will leave uh, the time to the other people, uh, other questions. There. Thank you very much. Yeah. I will. Uh, 有个邀请咧，大家或者可以打开呢个镜头，我哋影张全体合照。咁啊，繼續歡迎我哋發行嘅英語合照之後，同埋 ，by the way，Jamie，are you 呃、uh, ，will you invite Janet to say something after the good picture？Sure，so、um, Janet，I、um, don't know if there's anything that you want to add from a household goods perspective because I think it's also、um, interesting to hear your opinion on 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 what's going on， and then perhaps also talk a little bit about、uh, household goods shipments from Hong Kong as well。If you don't mind,、uh, Janet. Before that, may I invite everybody to、uh, open your camera? We take a group picture. 打开你个镜头啊，麻烦你 show show 你个靓样。多谢多谢合作。Janet, you still haven't opened the door, Janet. Sorry. Okay. Michael, I know he's got some special situations. He can't open the door. Oh. Okay. 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 Ok
，尽量啦，尽量啦，啊，阿 Anthony ready 哦，你未开麦 ，Anthony， 你未开麦，系唔好意思啊，嗱，我会影咧就诶每。啊，今日咧就有廿零誒一個 page 就就得啦。咁、嗯、樣我會影三張嘅嚇嗱，咁、嗯、大家準備啦喎嚇嗱，大家可以俾個 like 佢啊，係啦，準備一二三，一二三，一二三，登，唔該曬 ，thank you。OK， Janet， 係，你係咪有啲嘢同我哋分享下？誒、uh, ，大致上如果香港過嚟嘅咧，一般都係啲啊 groupage 嘅貨啦，即係 which means 啲 client 就 usually 啲貨係少啲嘅，咁就變咗可能 either group 埋一個二十尺位啊，或者係四十尺位啊，或者係四十尺 high Q 咁樣咯。咁但係有啲客人咧，佢都會比較多啲嘢，就變咗有一個 full container 嘅，咁有啲會二十啦，有啲係四十。咁除咗香港過嚟嘅客，誒都有其他亞洲地方誒回流翻嚟嘅客人嘅。Yeah. How come everyone disappear？ 阿 Jenny， 你本身都係做物流嗰啲係嘛？做誒、uh, ，actually 我係 Jamie 嘅同事嚟嘅。哦、oh, ，OK <笑>。Yeah。其他朋友咧？其他朋友冇咩意見啊？或者想討論下，或者有問題？香港有間，香港有間公司叫 Spaceship， 我哋有冇聽過啊 ？Spaceship 係咪新開嘅咧？呢家誒，我諗係新開嘅，都都做咗兩三幾年嘅啦，都。哦、oh, ，OK。佢佢話一條龍喎，好似話香港係做落資食，去幫人移民啊，咁樣 pack 好曬啲嘢咁樣。你有冇聽過啊？ Uh, Spaceship 一樣好似最近都有聽過。誒、uh, ，通常咧佢哋係咁嘅，譬如當 Spaceship 佢哋。喺當地做咗嗰個客人 call 啦，咁佢誒 Spaceship 有同事就過去做 survey，survey 之後咧就睇一個客人幾時訂個機票啊，幾時誒、嗯、或者買屋啊，或者係誒嗰個 rental contract 完啦，咁佢就 pack 啲行李出嚟啦，嚇、啊、咁跟住就上貨櫃，咁跟住佢就會裝櫃啊、裝船咁樣過嚟，咁一般咧就會佢有個誒、嗯、目的地嘅 agent 去幫佢 handle。destination 嘅 service 嘅嚇，咁 usually 就係一過咗一到咗碼頭就係報關，跟住就拉貨櫃，跟住就睇下客人邊一日誒、嗯、方便就將啲將只貨櫃或者係將個貨去咗一個貨車嗰度，跟住就送去屋企咁樣啦。嚇，咁佢之所以叫一條龍，咁但係中間嘅 communication 咧都好多嘅，同埋 involve 嘅人咧都比較多啲嘅。因為佢喺誒科學園一個創創幾誒創業中心嚟嘅創業嚟嘅佢啊，一個新嘅係啊，創業喺西西環咯嚇，係係係，西環七號差館對面咯，<笑>你都知啊 ，OK， 係啊，喺、okay. 香港咁啊係嘛，係啊香港嘅，香港公司。而家我先梁先梁有個問題，我想問你阿 Jamie 嘅，咁或者陣咧你可以。誒開始嗰時提到咧，話有啲叫做誒 fine arts 嗰啲藝術品嗰啲誒，你哋係收藏，即係幫佢哋運輸嗰陣時，係咪要特別處理？誒、呃，另外一個問題就係關於 medical equipment 嗰啲咁樣，可唔可以補充少少啊 ？You or Jamie can yeah yeah I can、uh, give you a little bit more information about that.、Uh, so it's、uh, two very interesting、um, services,、uh, and、uh, these are two services that be before I came on board to Armstrong. I had actually never handled before, so it's quite interesting. So, fine arts is a, a business whereby、um, we help customers transport by air, usually,、uh, and then、um, we transport them from from A to B. So, let's say if you you are、uh, working for the uh, uh, Vancouver、um, Art Gallery and you want to transport five pieces of art to Los Angeles to exhibit, we will help you pack and wrap the art. Crate it and then air freight it to Los Angeles, and then bring it back as well. So that's something that we can do.、Uh, it's not just in, internationally to the USA or、uh, globally. We also do it domestically as well between Vancouver and Toronto. My question、and、is for the for the finals, very dedicated uh, uh, the, uh, to the weather, or the I mean the climate control. So how you guys con、yep. uh, handle it? Yeah, it's、um, we actually have a climate-controlled vault inside our storage facility. So, 
Uh, our Toronto warehouse is 200,000 square feet, and that's why we handle all the fine arts uh, majorly. And uh, our one here is in the West. So uh, we have a temperature controlled area whereby all the fine arts are stored. And the vault is actually inside a, a room which has a, a locked access to it as well. So it's, 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 it's basically very, very high tech uh, controlled environment whereby the uh, temperature is controlled and the access is controlled as well. Only two people out of our company can get access to the fine arts vault. So what about the transportation on the road? I mean, uh, you mean fine arts? Yeah. Yep. Uh, it's it's con air conditioned as well. When it, when it transport transportation on the road. Yep. It, it's inside the air conditioned uh, 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 truck. The truck. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, well, sorry, I shouldn't say air conditioned. Temperature controlled. Temperature controlled. Because then uh, you'll be uh, <laughs> kind of like freezing the item, right? So the scientific one is quite interesting. We are probably the first moving company in this industry to do this. Scientific equipment uh, doesn't just mean equipment. Uh, so we're, we're, we're talking about lab testing equipment that could be moved from university to university, hospital to hospital. We also move samples. So if there's a sample that was tested in Toronto, it needs to be transported and there are a lot of samples because it, it is quite expensive to transport by air. So a lot of our customers that, uh, that, that may not be in that position to spend that kind of money, uh, they would rather pay for land transport. And land transport, we can also do that uh, uh, um, um, uh, in a temperature control environment. But that typically is between short distances. So, so, so we would maybe perhaps transport it from Mississauga to Toronto or from Vancouver to Richmond, that kind of thing, rather than long distances. So samples, we tend to transport short distances. Medical equipment, we transport them long distances. But a very, very specialized industry. You, mentioned, you also mentioned about the samples. Are they time consumed, time sensitive? They need in a certain time to deliver them? Yes, yes, yes. So. That's why we focus on uh, the short distance transportation as well, whereby it's uh, kept in a uh, uh, um, environment where it's suitable to maintain the integrity of the sample itself. So usually we, we have to maintain the integrity uh, and, and mainly it's due to the temperature in which it's actually stored in and, and transported. In. So it has to be transported in a temperature control environment. Okay, any other questions? Anthony, here Maybe I can answer this, but I don't think my Cantonese is good enough to answer in Cantonese. Um, so whenever we move a customer from A to B, we do uh, encourage them to purchase insurance. Uh, uh, so that's a very, very important part of the actual equation itself, because uh, if anything happens to the item, it doesn't matter which moving company you use, uh, they will only have a basic coverage. So. Uh, buying insurance is very important and making sure that you uh, go through the list and put down everything that you want to move and include into the list is very, very important as well. So we as a company, we help customers with this process as well. So when you use our services, uh, we will actually guide you through the process and tell you what you should be doing in terms of listing uh, the, the, uh, the items for insurance. Um, just for your reference, I have moved five times with household goods. So I moved internationally five times with household goods. Mm. So um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to come and ask me because I will be able to, uh, to answer that. Thank you.
其他朋友仲冇乜问题？诶、uh, ，Anthony，Hello，Anthony。Yes， Janet。呀，啊，头先你问 Jamie 嗰啲问题咧，会唔会系你近日有呢个情况发生？唔系 ，in general 啫，啊。Oh, general， OK， OK。甚至如果你个诶嗰个嗰啲 I 某一啲 item 如果系贵啲嘅咧，你可以选择做个 creating， 啊，个 packing, 做个咩话 ？creating 做木箱。做木箱，木箱哦 ，OK 啊，木箱嚇，咁、啊、你可以誒、uh, suggest 或者係誒、uh, 問下嗰個 moving company 做一個 creating for in particular， 譬如當你個 speaker 係好貴嘅，誒一萬蚊一一個 pair， 咁你可以做木箱啦，誒、um, 又或者係係啦 ，usually 個現收可能你就要買買得重啲，或者係 individually 咁樣，淨係買嗰啲貴重嘅嘢，再加上出文咁樣咯，嗯，入、嗯。Yeah. 系啊，因为呢，因为呢，我有一次呢，就我以前喺香港搬运啦，咁啊搬过由由由一间屋搬去第二间屋，咁啊诶咁啊诶觉得个搬运几好喎、啊，咁样，咁咧我就介绍咗个朋友，嗰、那个朋友呢，就发烧友嚟嘅 ，high five，high five fans，ok，、okay? 咁呢 he has a lot of 嗰啲嗯好 precious 嘅嘅音响设备嘅，咁啊结果呢。嗰啲設備咧，即係啲唔知 speaker 定乜嘢爛咗，咁啊個朋友都冇得做，因為個朋友鬧到我死，因為話你你介紹間咁嘅嘢，垃圾嚟嘅咁樣嚇，咁啊整誒整爛咗我啲嘢，我我我以前聽開嗰啲音樂咧聽唔翻啊咁樣，話結果朋友都冇得做，所以我哋就就睇下你啊睇下你哋頭先講就 fine art 啊嚇，音響嗰啲嚇咁即係有啲人佢好中意佢自己嗰啲。音響設備噶嘛？你有冇啲特殊嘅處理或者一啲嘅嘅嘅嘅做法咧？咁樣可以介紹下嘛？啊 ，thank you。一日 OK。通通常如果 local move 咧，就係、是、即 protection 要比較好啲啦。除咗 blanket 之外，可能要用紙箱去 individual 咁 pack 咗佢啦。咁如果你話係 ocean 過嚟去邊個國家都好啦，都係。有機會就係做個木箱咯，咁就會好啲。咁同埋呢啲情況咧，就最好俾佢自己去 source 有幾間去 compare， 咁就你又唔需要即係咁大嘅責任咯。呀，同埋買重驗梳，係呀。即係你嘅意思係佢啲譬如啲音響係特別特別再再揾一間啊 mover 去做，係咪咁解啊？唔係誒，會係。佢可能會選擇一兩間或者三間去比較下，睇下嗰啲 mover 係俾到佢啲咩 information， 佢 feel comfortable，comfortable 而去 pick 嗰間公司去幫佢做咯。啊，咁如果你係運由香港運過嚟，當然木箱係最好咯。呀 ，thank you，thank you。其他朋友啦，其他朋友冇咩问题啊？最近有冇识得啲朋友系从香港啊，或者边度会移民过嚟？可以喺呢方面参考下。好，张叻，佢哋举咗手，你啱。O.K. 咁如果趁呢個時候咧，誒、呃、未有其他朋友誒、呃、發問嘅時候咧，想講一講，譬如香港過嚟嘅誒移民啦，或者新移民啦，或者係回流嘅朋友啦，咁佢哋有幾種身份可以過嚟嘅。咁第一咧，就有啲係誒新移民啦，嗰、那個係 land immigrant 啦，或者係 returning residents 啦，曾經喺誒呢邊住過，跟住回流咗翻香港，依家想想再翻嚟啦。咁亦都有一啲係誒 work permit 啦，或者係 student visa 啦。誒、um, ，再有一啲咧就係話誒比較特殊啲嘅情況就係話誒，如果係 sib between siblings 嘅，咁誒 siblings 可能會 down size 間屋啦，咁佢將嗰啲嘢將啲傢俬啊，或者係有啲誒 sentimental value 嘅 item 想運佢過嚟啦，誒、呃、都可以嘅。咁呢個情況咧就係、是、誒、呃
有另外啲方法去同海關講，就可以將呢啲貨入到、呃、加拿大嘅時候，就唔需要俾關税，係啦。咁如果你 returning residents 咧，佢哋翻嚟咧都可以話係誒免關税嘅，譬如係 proof of 個 one year of absence 啦、呃。student usually 都唔需要俾關税嘅，嚇 work permit 都唔需要。咁另外最後一個一種咧就係做誒 bequest 啦，就係話誒可能 grandparents 或者 parents pass away 啦，咁佢誒想運誒佢嘅 belongings 過嚟俾佢啲小朋友啦，即係小朋友想將佢運佢過嚟啦。咁呢啲就一般就可能需要個 death certificate 啦，或者係有個 POA 啊，誒嗰啲咁嘅 proof 咧去運佢過嚟。咁啊，一般入口嘅時候海關都唔會。誒、uh, 有 charge 呢個 duty and tax 嘅，係啦，咁 pass 翻俾 Alexander。Winston， 你有冇咩問題啊 ？Winston， 誒冇啊，冇，可以 close 噶啦。如果今晚黑冇咩問題，我哋或者可以早少少要結束。